Hello everyone and welcome back to the series on scenario-based SQL query interview questions. The scenario that we're going to discuss today is about converting the data from rows into columns. So let's get started. So the data that we're going to work with today is employee data. And if we take a look at the data in our EMP table, then it is of this sort. So you have three columns called name, value and ID. In name, you have different kind of parameters like the name of the person or the employee, the gender of the employee, the salary of the employee, and you have his ID all throughout these records. Now, what we want to achieve is basically convert this data from rows into columns. So we want distinct columns by the name of ID, name, gender and salary and I want those values coming into those columns and this being all present in a single record or a single row. So we are going to discuss today two ways in which we can achieve this. The first method is to use the case statement. So many of you might already be familiar with the case statement. It's kind of a conditional statement. It's almost like an if then else construct, but it's easier to write and define. So let's see how we can use the case statement to convert this data from rows into columns. So let's start with the select query, select, and I want the ID column as a distinct column in the output. So let's select the ID column. The next column, or the three columns I want are name, gender, and salary. So these are based on the values in the field name in my employee table. So I have to write a conditional statement now, which is going to be a case statement. And based on the field value, if it is name, I'm going to create a column called name. If it is gender, I'm going to create a column called gender. If it is salary, I'm going to create a column called salary. And at the same time, I want to populate these distinct values, the corresponding values in these distinct in these distinct columns as well. So let's start with a case statement. And this is the syntax of writing a case statement. So you just put case and then you say when. So when this condition is met, my condition is going to be when the value in the field name is equal to name, then I have to now fetch the corresponding value, which is Adam. So I have to fetch value over here so when my field name is name so it is going to go to this particular record fetch the corresponding value which is going to be Adam and if the field name is not name then just fetch some default value which is going to be an empty string in our case and then you have to end the statement with a keyword and so this is how you write a case statement so now i have a complete case statement so you start with writing case then you define your condition in the when within the when clause so when whatever is your condition then if that condition is met then what happens if condition is not met then what happens and you just close the and uh, the case statement with an and and now the result of this statement i want to put in a distinct column which i am going to call name now similarly i want to do case statements for different for the other two columns that i want to create so let's just copy this case statement two more times and then change your criteria so when the field value is gender again i want to fetch the value but i want to name this column as gender so put gender and similarly, when it is salary, I want to name that distinct column that I'm going to create as salary. And all this data I'm going to fetch from my dbo.amp table. So now we have created the, que uh, the query. We have uh, created a case conditions. Let's see how this query gives the results. So just execute this query. Now, when you execute this query, you see that instead of all of the data being aggregated into a single record, we have got three distinct records as we had in a base table. And then we have got the values for these distinct columns that we have created in distinct rows. But we want it 
all to collate into a single record so we have to use some aggregate function and we can aggregate by the id because the id is common for all these three records so the key column on which we are going to aggregate is id for these other three distinct columns that we have created we need to use some aggregate functions now since this is these are basically textual values or string values i cannot use an average function the safest function to use in this case would be a max function because max can work on string as as well so i'm going to use that function now to combine all these values into a single record so i have to use the max function on top of the case statement so max or whatever this case statement is giving as the output results and then i have to just name that column accordingly so just put your max command aggregation command on top of your case statement for the three columns that we have created And now since we have used an aggregate function, we need to use the group by clause. And as we discussed, we are going to group by the ID column because that has the same value for all those three records. Now if I execute this query, I should get the desired result. And this is what I wanted. I wanted all the data to be combined in a single row and I have achieved my purpose of converting the data from rows into columns. So this is how you can use the case statement for achieving this purpose, converting the data from rows to columns, which is also known as pivoting the data. So now since we are discussing pivoting the data, there's actually another function that we can use to achieve the same results. And it is the pivot function itself. So I'm going to tell you the way in which we can use that. It is kind of an advanced level or intermediate level function. So I'm going to uh, split this video into two parts and I'm going to explain the pivot function in the second part. So all of you who are interested can go to that video separately and you can watch that video. I'm going to post those uh, these two videos at the same time so the continuity would be maintained so that's all we have for part one of this video if you're interested go and watch the part two of this video i'm putting the link above so you can directly click on the link and go to that video thanks for watching have a good day and stay safe